Are you social or antisocial? I guess I haven't been social in a while. How would you describe your relationship with your mother? Oh, Thank you. Please wait as your operating system is initiated. Hello, I'm here. Hi. Now that was a clip from the movie Her, a drama set in the not too distant future about a lonely man who falls in love with his operating system. In 2013, when the film came out, a relationship with a virtual assistant was still largely science fiction, but recent leaps in artificial intelligence are making new kinds of one-sided emotional connections possible. Some see AI as a useful and cost-effective therapy for the growing number of people suffering from feelings of loneliness and isolation. Chatbots designed to boost well-being are already out there, and the demand for AI-based mental health services is expected to boom in the coming years. Well, earlier this month, U.S. Surgeon General shone a light on the problems associated with loneliness by declaring it an American epidemic. He said the growing isolation in society poses a health risk as deadly as smoking. In an 80-page report, Dr. Vivek Morty said, we now know that loneliness is a common feeling that many people experience. It's like hunger or thirst. It's a feeling the body sends us when something we need for survival is missing. And Dr. Naomi Wei is a professor of developmental psychology at New York University. She's been researching the impact of loneliness for much of her career. Dr. Wei, welcome. And our modern Thank world you. is more connected than ever, and yet more and more people suffer from isolation and loneliness. How do you explain this contradiction? Yeah, so so basically what you have, so everything I'm about to say comes from doing research with uh, teenagers and young adults for the past 35 years. Um, I'm a developmental psychologist studying social emotional development. So I wanna make it very clear that what I'm about to say is not my opinion, but it's actually what my findings are have been showing for over three decades as the root of our problem. And what young people teach us through my mixed mes method longitudinal research that I've been doing for over three decades is that um, it, we live in a culture that's out of sync with our nature and that's creating a crisis of connection, which is essentially loneliness. And what I mean by that is it's a culture that doesn't value the very things that young people say they want and need. And it's primarily, if not exclusively, uh, close relationships, friendships, friendships in which they can be emotionally intimate, where there's a deep understanding, they feel seen and heard and listened to. And they're starving for those relationships. And we live in a culture, however, that doesn't value that, that, that thinks academic achievement and making a lot of money is more valuable than uh, close, intimate friendships or relationships. So we put the so-called hard skills over the so-called soft skills. And yet humans are naturally both hard and soft in terms of we have our hard skills and our soft skills. We need our soft skills to make connections with each other. If we live in a culture that doesn't value those skills, it means we face a crisis, which is we raise our children to go against their nature, and then we wonder why we grow up to be so lonely. Um, we're not using the, the, the natural capacity we have as humans uh, to deeply connect with each other, um, and we're not even valuing that connection. How did <laughs> so we get here? We when did we our... stop listening to, to our, our urges, our social needs? Well, yeah, it's so fascinating to me. So. Basically, it was uh, apparently the big transition happened in the 1980s, uh, at least in the United States. So we've seen the loss of friendship and the loss of connection within communities um, uh, go up, particularly starting in the 1980s, late 1970s. So essentially, in the United States, that's also when you started to see income inequality rise. Uh, you had Reaganomics enter the culture. Um, you started to see this very money-oriented culture grow in huge leaps and bounds. Um, and at that very moment where we started to become more what I would call hardcore capitalists, um, we started to see the disconnection start to increase in our communities. And then obviously, as everybody points out, starting in about 2000, 2004, when Facebook comes into our conversations, uh, social media exacerbated that. But we have to get over over saying that technology created this disconnection. It just exacerbated what was already happening 
because we cannot live in a culture that doesn't value our social and emotional natural capacities and needs, or else we kill ourselves and we kill each other, which is what's happening right now. I mean, we're really in a crisis at this point, um, and we're not seeing sort of what I call the hand in front of our face, which is a cultural problem. It's not an individual problem. It's not a matter of just fix the lonely people. It's a matter of changing our culture so that we value both sides of our humanity, which is our hard and our soft sides, not just our, our so-called hard sides. Yeah. Uh, before we get to ways of possibly, hopefully fixing this, I want to talk yeah. about your your specific field of study because you yeah. have centered your work on, on men and boys, adolescent boys, as I understand. How yeah. much do stereotypes of what constitutes masculinity affect social bonds and the lack thereof? Oh, that's, yeah. I mean, that's all part of when I say hard skills, I mean masculinity. <laughs> Uh, so what's stereotypic masculinity, because of course, when you talk to boys and men, and I've been talking, interviewing boys and men since 1987, a long time. Uh, and by the way, around the world, uh, my uh, my family, my ex-husband and my kids are all from Berlin. So uh, I know the world, including your world. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and basically men and boys are naturally just like girls and women and non-gender conforming people. They, they have their soft sides and their hard sides, and, but we only value the masculine side and we demean and mock the so-called feminine side, which isn't, you know, we take these sides and we give them a gender identity. Uh, a hard side, our desire for autonomy and our desired connection are actually not gendered, they're human. Um, and the fact that we've gendered them is what's caused the problem. So yes, norms of masculinity are a huge problem um, in, because norms of masculinity in, 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 you know, in, implicitly and explicitly value everything that we call so-called hard and demean everything that we call so-called soft. Hmm. Um, and we don't want to be soft, we want to be hard. So, But I want to point out to your listeners that masculinity doesn't just affect boys and men, it affects everybody because yes. it's the rule of the day. So girls and women are now starting to feel more and more pressure to man up. Uh, you get that across the world. We do studies in China. Girls are now more likely to identify with needing to man up than boys at this point um, because they see that if you so-called man up, you get access to more power. So, the, yeah. you know, girls and women are smart. <laughs> they figured it out that if you actually deny half of your humanity, you end up getting more opportunity oftentimes. So the point is, is that it absolutely is rooted in masculinity. And I just, to, again, to give to your viewers, uh, listeners, um, this is not sort of some perspective I'm spouting. This is really coming from directly the words of young men from around the world for over three decades. And I know I'm going to keep on repeating that, but I just want to say young people have been telling us this for a long time. Yeah. And we so it's not, it's not a recent listen. thing. No, it's not it's, a recent it's development. Not a recent it's not thing. just TikTok. But let's let's look at how to how to fix this. Because if it's in yeah. our culture, it'll take a huge effort to reverse this trend, won't it? Um, we initially talked about technologies aimed at helping people overcome loneliness and isolation, but can AI ever be yeah. as good as the real thing, or is this just a symptomatic treatment of a, of a much larger problem? Yeah, no, I'm actually gonna give a much more hopeful response than you. I think you expected. Um, so basically it's the way we use technology, it's not technology. So if we use technology where we all we have is likes and all you're looking for is how many likes you get, that creates a me, a me media, not a social media. So then it's about getting millions of likes versus actually connecting to other people. If you made TikTok a more relationally based so that it was more about people connecting to each other, influences connecting with their moms, their friends, et cetera, on TikTok and modeling how to connect, use relational skills on TikTok, you could totally transform the, the world of, of technology. AI, I also want to add, AI has the capacity actually to help human-human connection um, by actually nurturing the sort of fundamental relational skills we need, like curiosity, interpersonal curiosity about each other that's at the root of all good connection. Uh, the reason why AI will never work in the way they're using AI right now is that it doesn't entail the natural curiosity that AI does not have. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's the idea is that our curiosity is at the root of how we connect to each other. Who are you? What can, you, what can I learn from you about how to live a life? All those kinds of things 
that humans have naturally, five-year-olds have in wild capacity, um, and, and yet we don't nurture that interpersonal curiosity. So AI and technology actually could enhance our human skills, but we've decided to use it in a way that just enhances our self-obsession and our need to get affirmation rather than to build connection. So much more to talk about. This is fascinating stuff, but we'll have to leave it there. Dr. Naomi Wei of NYU, okay. great speaking to you tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Nicole. Okay, take care.